welcome to another episode of Convention Confessional. My name is Katie Hunt, and I'm here to guide you through the good, the bad, and the ugly of the convention story world. Um, it's October. It's my favorite month. It's spooky month. And uh, my friend today, Patrick D., is back to share some spooky stories with us of convention life, or something along those lines. Hi, Patrick. Hey, Katie. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. I, I love that you jumped on the opportunity for this. <laughs> you jumped on the opportunity for this one. I was like, I need spooky stories. And you were like, I have stories. I'm like, oh, yeah. yay. <laughs> yeah. You know, spooky, so. scary, bad. Bad. Yes. Yes. Good. Good. Because, like, everyone everyone that's come on has, like, you know, like, some, like, <gasps> moments. But, like, I I'm excited about this. Like, you gave me kind of, like, a little briefing. But I still am not sure what I'm walking into. So this is exciting for me. Yeah. I think these are kind of like, oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, maybe sometime I can come on and talk about happy stories. Because last time Yay! I talked about terrible convention, and now I'm going to talk about terrible, scary things. <laughs> Don't worry, your your day will come yes. where you can tell a nice story. <laughs> yeah, I got plenty more. So. Yay! Not all horror well, stories. Ooh. Well, please, by all means, let's get this party rolling. What, what do you got for me? All right, so the first tale, it starts uh, in Georgia. A uh, dark and stormy night. Yes. Uh, <laughs> morning. But uh, okay. anyway, the, from uh, 86 to 2001, there was a multi-genre con uh, known as Magnum Opus Con. And they were founded by a uh, comics retailer, Roland Castle. And so he was the president of the Bloom County Fan Club, uh, which is how Magnum Opus Con got Opus in his name. Uh, and he mm -hmm. hoped to eventually get Bloom County creator Berkeley breath as a guest of honor uh that never happened uh Aww. the con did manage to get some very well-known guests though uh including okay. dr who's john pertwee colin baker sylvester mccoy louise jameson uh star trek's james dewin george takai deforest kelly michelle nichols so they got big names coming to this con yeah, yeah. Uh, and they've also got authors and comic artists and astronauts and so astronauts yeah what <laughs> That's uh, awesome. So anyway, as the years went on, Roland Castle felt that Dragon Con, which started in Atlanta a year after his con, was kind mm -hmm. of encroaching yeah. on his territory. And the Dragon Con employees were disrupting Magna Opus Con. Uh, so he began banning various people from the con, including novelist Tom, Tom Dietz. And uh, wow. so he tried to shift the, his con to be more family friendly. Uh, he moved the con on the calendar to be the same weekend as Dragon Con. And then he, uh, after trying the family friendly part and that didn't work, he brought back the adult programming and then he moved to back to spring and just moving around and changing everything was just a bad idea because the people that liked what it was before left. And then the people who liked the new thing didn't discover it. And the ones that did left. So the con moved around a couple times and then it, wasn't held again after March 2001. All right. But, you know, with all this infighting with Magnum Opus Con and Dragon Con and all the other drama in here, it's not really the thing this con is known for. Um, uh -huh. See, in its second year, in 1987, mm -hmm. sure. there was a guest who doctors had warned should not be exerting himself by attending a convention. Okay. And so this guest ignored the doctor's warning. Uh -huh. uh, flew from the UK to Georgia, and he was in great spirits. He enjoyed the panels the first day of the con, and uh, he looked forward to his belated birthday celebrating on Saturday evening. And uh, they also planned special Saturday afternoon screenings of all surviving copies of this guest's episodes of Doctor Who. Okay. Uh, he was looking forward to seeing the Dominators. He actually asked to see that in the screening. Uh, uh -huh. But just after ordering breakfast, this guest, Patrick Troughton, better known as the second doctor, <gasps> he suffered a third and final heart attack at 7.25 a.m. on <gasps> Saturday, March 28th, 1987. Uh, the paramedics on the scene said he died instantly. Oh, my God. That's where he died? He died at a convention. <gasps> Not a good convention, but uh, and 
and I've done research, and this is the only time I can find where a guest has died during a convention. Oh my god! I mean, we've had some guests die soon after a convention. It's like, oh, I'm glad I got to see their last appearance. Or some guests die before a convention. Sure, sure. Uh, like Carrie Fisher comes to mind. She had a few cons coming up when she passed away. But right, right, right. The only time I can find where a guest actually died during the convention at the convention. So. Oh my god. Yeah. <gasps> can you imagine, like, the handler? Like, you're at the door, like, sir, yeah. you gotta go. <laughs> and then somebody Hello? goes to check on him, and it's like, oh, crap, the <gasps> doctor is dead. <laughs> Oh no! The do- oh no! Not the doctor. <laughs> you turn right, you turn oh right. no! Um, so yeah, they cremated him, and his ashes were transported back to England. But in transport, his ashes were temporarily misdirected, and uh, it delayed his funeral by a few weeks. Uh, so, when he gets sent to customs, I, I, yeah, I don't know how. I mean, oh look, here's this very well-known person. Where'd the ashes go? I don't know. All right. Keep track of this stuff. Some nerd has them. Yeah. Like, they, did fi- yeah, I mean, they did find it, and his wife scattered them beneath a tree in London's Bushy Park. Uh, so if you go to okay. London and Bushy Park, some one of those trees somewhere, there's a doctor under it. So there's a doctor under one of those trees. Yeah. Oh my god! I can't even imagine having to make that announcement at the convention. Oh my! Oh, I didn't even thought like, of that. Like, can you imagine just being like? Uh, yeah, Patrick Troughton's <laughs> channel has been canceled because he's dead. So, he's he I dead. Mean, and we're not that... we're not weakened at burning this. We can't. <laughs> how does this even affect the mood at the con? It's like, oh yeah, let's go have fun Saturday. It's like, hmm. Mm. No, I, I think Mm-mm. everybody's just gonna be really sad the rest of that. Weekend. Oh God, could you imagine if they had attempted weekend at Bernie though? Oh my God. Just sit him up on a stage. Patrick Trout is coming yeah. to the panel, guys. Yeah. Like, he was oh. video screenings, and he's there in the front row. Just, <laughs> just like sitting there. Now, my, my guess would be they still did the screenings, but it was more in tribute. Sure, I'm sure. That makes there. sense. If you planned it. All right, let's right. keep going. I mean, yeah. I mean, what are you going to do? Cancel a whole video panel just because he can't be there? No. <laughs> yeah. And I, I mean, I'm just guessing. I haven't found any info on this, but I'd say that, you know, his... Q and A, I'd turn that into a tribute where I'd just have people say, "Oh, you know, he meant so much to me." You know, I let the audience just do it. I don't know. Right, like, just yeah, like that's... you know, like send it, send it home to his family if they recorded it or something. But this is like eighty-seven too. So yeah, who's this, recording it? it? There's no iPhones there. You'd right. Like you'd a VHS <laughs> camera. Probably. I mean, not. eighty-seven. They're lucky they had a microphone, huh? Yeah. I'm not just kidding. Probably somebody, <laughs> some people with you know, film cameras. I'm sure, but. Yeah, got those huge bulky cameras with the VHS tape in them. <laughs> yeah, I yeah we used to have one of those. I never brought it to a con, but uh, yeah, my my parents used to rent them to like record our concerts when we were in middle school. Like this huge camera with the, oh. the VHS tape. Oh man. Yeah, we we went wow. to Disney World once, and my father brought this huge clunky camera, and he had to carry it around everywhere. But. Oh. Uh, now, I've got the tape in the VCR here. My son, who's three, comes in and pushes the tape in and starts playing it. He likes to watch Disney World. So it's like, oh, great. Okay. <laughs> this is how you will be going. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Disney's expensive. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my God. I can't believe he died at the convention. <gasps> yeah. Jeez. That's so far away crazy. from home in a different country. So right? the logistics of it, maybe that's how they, you know, lose the ashes on the way back for a while. I don't know. Maybe. But yeah, and I've looked. I can't find any other stories of guests passing away at a con. Uh, I mean, that's good. Yeah, yeah. But, but you know, oof. you think all these guests and all these cons happened yeah. more than once, but no, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, and Ooh. like so I, I did find one. I don't remember who it was. They they weren't feeling well, so they stayed home and didn't go to the con, and then died that weekend. But they weren't at the con. So. Right, right. They they didn't yeah. travel, so. Yeah. So, but yeah, yikes. Yikes. Uh, but you know, that's not even the worst story of horrors at conventions. I think. What? <laughs> well, a man's dead, Patrick. How is that not yeah. worse? 
Well, you know, a lot of people say, oh, Dash Con, that's a terrible con. I, I, <laughs> then I think, no, really, all in all, Dash Con wasn't as bad as some other conventions. Uh, mm -hmm. So th there's one that is, in, in my book, it's the number one worst convention ever. Oh, exciting. And, but beyond a shadow of a doubt, it's not a fan convention, though. Uh, but it's still a convention, and I, I, the story is like, what? Uh, so it's 1976, America's Bicentennial. And so wow. where do you want to have a convention for the Bicentennial? Philadelphia. Yeah! Um, why not? Yeah. Uh, so you, uh, this group of the American Legion rented out the Belvert Stafford Hotel, and more than 2,000 people attended the three-day con. And so, you know, I presume they had a good time and you know, there's 2,000 people talking about whatever American Legion things they talk about. America! And, yeah. <laughs> so on uh, July 27th, three days after the con ended, mm -hmm. a man by the name of Ray Brennan, a 61-year-old retired Air Force captain, died at his home uh, from an apparent heart attack. Okay. Uh, he had left the con the evening of July 24th and complained of feeling tired. So, but on, then on July 30th, another convention attendee also died of an apparent heart attack, as did three others. What? And then 24 hours later, on August 1st, six more died between the ages of 39 and 82. And all what? of them had complained of tiredness, chest pains, lung congestion, and fever. So, I mean, you talk about con plague, Something's going on. But at this point, nobody's really made the connection that, oh, yeah, they were all at this con. It's just sure. because it's days later. Right. And, you know, they've gone back to work or back to their homes and, you know, they're going about their lives just, oh, you know, I'm a little tired. Sure, sure. And, uh, but three of these people had been patients of the same doctor in Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania. And he realized they'd all been at the same con. So he contacted the Pennsylvania Department of Health. Uh, and also, the American Legion was suddenly getting notices of deaths of several members all at the same time and all in the same area. Uh, and within a week, more than 130 people had been hospitalized and 25 uh, died. What? <laughs> Eventually, there were 182 cases of this mysterious disease and 29 oh people died. So, uh, yeah, the CDC launched an investigation, and by September, a few months later, they shifted the focus from an outside case, like somebody coming to the convention with some sort of weird disease, and they started mm -hmm. focusing on the venue itself, that okay. uh, Bellevue Stratford Hotel. Uh -huh. And uh, the, the following January, uh, <laughs> a bacterium was finally identified, isolated, and found to be breeding in the cooling tower of the hotel's air conditioning system. Uh, the AC spread it through the building, and also uh, it resulted in new worldwide regulations for climate control systems to stop this from happening again. Uh, the CDC's press conference, where they announced the discovery, they also announced the bacterium's name. Taking its name from the American Legion, it's Legionella pneumophila, which oh my we God! now know is the most common cause of what's now called Legionnaire's disease. God. Yeah, That's they how had it that gets on Hampton game. Beach a couple years ago. Yeah. <gasps> the, the Sheraton Atlanta uh, had an outbreak of Legionnaire's disease in 2019, just weeks before Dragon Con. And so <sighs> I would nope right out of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell no. Mm -mm. Yeah. I'm glad I did not have reservations at that Sheraton that year. Uh, oh, but, yeah. Wow. Legionnaire's disease comes from a convention. <laughs> uh, convention for the bicentennial sir 29 people out of the 2000 died so that's oh. more than one percent and like almost 200 of them got sick yeah yeah so 10 percent got sick and, oh know, my god that's worst so ever wow what a history lesson this episode's turning into yeah. my god <laughs> I love it. Wow. So Legionnaire's disease started at a, at a um, Independence Day convention. Well, it was in July, but it was bicentennial year. 
in Philly. Right, right, right. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so when people say, oh, uh, Dash Con's the worst con ever. Ball pit, huh? It's like, yeah, you're lucky you didn't get sick in that ball pit and die. It's like, yeah, but did you create a new disease, bro? <laughs> yeah. Like... And, and now with this pandemic going on, all these people, oh, yeah, I'm going to go to the con. Like, mm, you know, have you heard about the Legionnaires Convention in 1973? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I feel like... They, you I feel like you have disease, But there's a little other thing you might catch. So definitely right, don't right. go to a con if you're not vaccinated. Oh, my God. Right. And wear right. masks it's anyway. The, it's the same thing, guys. It's the yeah. same thing. You know, if wearing oh a mask keeps you from getting a cold, hey, great. I haven't had a cold in two years now. Right? Yeah. It's been nice. Mm. I mean, I, can't, I mean, honestly, like, I look forward to wearing one probably at a convention just because it's like, cool, no con plague. Yeah. Or, exactly. or Legionnaire's disease. <laughs> yeah. And but that's not even, like, heard... really the convention center. That's, like, the hotel, right? Yeah. Yeah, was yeah a, that a... wasn't... Yeah. God. And so, you know, when I heard of that happening at the Sheraton in Atlanta. I had already known this story, and I was like, "Oh crap! No, 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 no! I'm not." <laughs> yeah, that's so and many I had, more I people. To check with my friends and make sure none of them. Are, you're not actually going to stay at that Sheraton. I mean, they said they cleaned it and everything, <laughs> but still. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It was. I forget. It was a couple of years ago. There's one of the hotels down on Hampton Beach that had it. And people were getting sick there, but there was something, I forget, there was something about it. It was actually, like, not just that hotel for some reason, because it, like, the air molecules from whatever AC that was pumping it out was pumping it into the place next door, too, somehow. Oh. So it was, like, a couple of buildings in that area, and, like, the air quality in that area. I was like, I'm not going anywhere near the beach (laughs) this year. Thank you. You know, I'd I'd rather not be sick than... Mm. Go to a con. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Con plague times like a thousand. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Breeding grounds. Yeah. See, you just never know. You never know what you're going to, like, like concoct in a convention area, like, gross-wise. Mm. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's, you know, I've gotten sick. <clears throat> I've gone to something like 190 conventions. And I've gotten sick after a few of them. Mm-hmm. But passes in a few days and usually i'm pretty good i make sure i wash my hands and you know, yeah oh yeah high-fiving on escalators it's like no what am i no i don't know where you're <laughs> absolutely <that>. not <laughs> but i'm not touching that the guy with the lysol home, can oh, like nope touch- like, well yeah you were touching everything what do you think is gonna happen <laughs> <laughs> hmm oh did i ever tell you the vesuvius story i don't know if you know the vesuvius story no so after anime boston 2019 which was the last anime Boston we've had so far because obviously next yeah. year we're coming back. Thank God. But 2019 and <clears throat> again, I'm not, I'm not a gross person. I shower, I take care of myself, vitamins, you know, like I'm good for the weekend. Like I'm, I'm an adult and I actually take care of myself now when I go to these things. <laughs> and the Monday after dead dog, I go home and you know, like showering, getting ready for work or whatever. And I think I've got like a zit on my head. And I really don't think anything of it because you're just like, okay, I've worn a lot of face makeup this weekend. Like, you know, like it's oily, whatever. Like, you know, oh no, I'm so-and-so years old and I'm getting a zit, whatever, right? Yeah. So then the next day I'm at work again because all I do is work in in case anybody was curious. Literally all I do is work. Um, I went to go wipe my, my... um, forehead and I felt it pop oh okay so you're like okay gross whatever you go to the bathroom you wipe your face off whatever life moves on wake up the next morning you hadn't seen and it in looks, the mirror or you, you yeah oh no it? I mean like I did like it just looked like a red spot you know you oh, popped okay. a zit it's just red yes. and irritated whatever right. um That's the next awful. morning I wake up and there's a crack in my forehead oh right and it's really red and I'm like, okay. So, you know, you wash it off and you're like, weird. This has never happened before. And as the day progressed, the crack got deeper. Ooh. And I was like, what is going on with my head? So I go and I get it checked out. Long story short, 
uh, you, don't go to a minute clinic <laughs> ever. <laughs> like don't ever go to the minute clinic. Just pay the money and go to your doctor. Cause they said that I had, um, um, some God awful, like flesh eating infection in oh. my face. Oh yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, Oh my God. And I didn't find out till I went through the paperwork. So I call my work and I'm like, hi, I'm taking an antibiotic, but I can't come to work for 24 hours because I have whatever they, this paperwork says I have. Right. Uh-huh. And they're like, okay, cool. Bye. Don't come here. I'm like, yeah, seriously. The next day I wake up, my entire face is swollen, Patrick. Oh. And I was like, oh my God, what is happening to me? So I go to the um, the hospital, obviously, at this point, because mm-hmm. like clearly something is wrong. It ended up being I had a cyst pop underneath my skin on my face. Oh. And, and I had to end up going to a dermatologist to like pull whatever it was out of there that caused like the cyst like the oh. cyst itself out of my face oh wow <laughs> i've never heard of anything like that right oh. and i'm just thinking to myself and i'm just like is this like a me thing or was this something from this weekend <laughs> like wow. i don't know you know what i mean like you don't know like it's like is it just like one of those random things like and apparently just to clarify for everybody some people when they get a cold they get a cold and you have the cough and the sneeze and the runny nose and bleh, right? And some people apparently, in my beautiful rare case, um, don't get any symptoms like that. They just grow cysts that are like a gross disease pocket, apparently. Oh, wow. So that was my con plague <laughs> that year. I hope it. I hope you recovered quickly. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, it was fine. Like I said, we washed everything out. I went to a dermatologist because they knew what they were talking about. Um, and now... It's not very noticeable because, I mean, you've seen me since 2019. Um, yeah. I actually have a scar over my eye. Oh, I hadn't noticed. Yeah, exactly. But before it turned into the scar that you can barely notice, I had probably about like a two like millimeter dent in my head. Whoa. Yeah. And we called it Vesuvius because it looked <laughs> like a huge crater, like angry volcano. <laughs> But yeah, no, it was crazy. And like I said, like, I mean, I went to Disney like a, like a couple weeks after all those Disney pictures. It's just a picture of like Vesuvius right in the middle of my head. Like, I was like, oh, man. But yeah, that was my con plague that year. And I was like, oh, my God. Wow. I'm never touching people again. And then COVID happened. So I'm definitely never touching people yeah. again. <laughs> nope. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, you never know. Sometimes complex shows up as a cold, and sometimes it shows up as a huge crater in your face. You never know. Oh, man. <laughs> wow. Uh, wow, Patrick. Just some stories. So, yeah, I, I, I get another story for you. Uh, and I promise nobody dies in this story. Boo! <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we can kill somebody off at the end. but Yay! <laughs> the con died. <laughs> and the con yeah. yeah. This is the story of a con dying. Yay! Uh, and what triggered this uh, story is I heard uh, uh, Totem Con mentioned uh, a few episodes back, and I was like, oh my god, I totally forgot about that con. <laughs> and oh, it was bad. Oh no. Um, yeah, so on, on my site, fancons.com, you can rate cons from one to five stars. And I've mm-hmm. only given 11 one-star reviews out of the 190 cons I've been to. Wow. Uh, my average rating is a 3.5, so I think I'm fairly balanced. Uh, yeah, but, no, I mean, not bad. Yeah, and my most recent one-star rating was the uh, uh, Wine Country Comic Con, which I talked about last time. Yep, yep. Uh, and so this story is my first one-star rating. Uh, Totem Con stood for Tunes of the 80s and More, which if you're okay. using the O for of, means you should also use the A for and and get Totem Con. <laughs> Whatever. Acronym- and that's why you got one star. <laughs> <laughs> the acronym was dumb. End of story. No. <laughs> so I, I first heard about this con only about a week and a half ahead of time. Uh, since I was involved with Anime Boston, we were getting it off the ground. It hadn't had our first con yet, but uh, I've been going to a lot of other New England cons for the last few years, and I never expected there was another con out there that I hadn't heard of. It slipped under mm-hmm. my radar. So 
not only did I find out about it the last minute, but I didn't even know about it the previous year. So it's a very stealthy con. Mm. Uh, of course, since I didn't hear about it, and since I'm out there looking for cons, because uh, I didn't have animecons.com at the time, I, but I was keeping track on my own site, so I just had a little schedule. And so I wondered, like, okay, I'm out there looking for cons, and I never heard of this. How many other people have actually heard of this? And so mm-hmm. uh, I did a little research and saw that the previous year they had about 200 people and maybe a dozen people in costume. You know, fairly respectable for a small con in 2001 and uh, for their first year. So, you know, they could have put up a few more flyers, got some more attention, drawn some more people in, but... Sure. Where was this located? Uh, the first year, I think it was in Danvers, Massachusetts. Okay. Uh, and the second year, they had moved to Natick, Massachusetts. And uh, it, okay, was at, okay. it was at the Hampton Inn, which I had been to a couple of years earlier for a presentation skills training uh, thing. I was working at the Monster Board. And, uh, yeah, the, that was boring right <laughs> anyway uh so i went upstairs to the hotel and i found the registration desk and they immediately let me know that paul dobson one of the three voice actors they had wouldn't be attending because he had passport trouble and so because he was maybe, dead <laughs> maybe no i think he's still alive no, he's not dead passport but, I mean, trouble there's, there's a red flag right there it's like okay you guys didn't know how to handle the visas properly for a canadian guest so Right. Whatever. At this point, you only needed a driver's license to enter the U.S. from Canada. Right. Vice versa. But uh, they said that uh, the author Ian Clark was in there signing, and uh, voice actors Scott McNeil and Brian Drummond would be there shortly. So, hey. Okay. I've seen Scott McNeil before at two cons at this point, mm-hmm. and uh, never met Brian Drummond. So I thought, okay, this will be good i like beast wars and they uh scott was in that and uh they were both in uh, gundam wing at the time yep. so you know so for a good 10 minutes i paced around the lobby and i debated to myself if i should actually attend this con or not because admissions was a whopping 35 dollars in dollars and this is back when you know a small con should not be costing 35 dollars right. uh, but also i was told the 35 dollars did not include Going to the guest Q and A panel or any autographs. If I wanted to do, if I wanted to go to their Q and A panel or get autographs, that was going to be fifty dollars. What? And I paid less than that for all the cons that I did uh, earlier that year. So this is fifty dollars. I mean, these days fifty dollars for a con. It's like, all right, that's what they're charging. In two thousand two, it was not. You would pay that for a huge con. Yeah. One that offered way more than Totem Con did. So <laughs> no, I gave in and paid the 35 uh, uh, but I figured, okay, I'm here anyway. I've got nothing else to do this weekend. And even if I can't go to the QA or get autographs, I have a shot at seeing Scott and Brian, maybe just passing by. And also, sure, sure. the prize for best costume is lunch with the guests. And given that there's literally nobody else with a costume there, I figured my odds are pretty damn good. <laughs> what was your costume? I brought Renamon. Oh, nice. Uh, I wasn't wearing it at the time because, you know, I was going to get my badge and you know, check it out before I just show up in a costume. But so uh, I got my hand stamp because it was a hand stamp event, no badge. Uh, uh-huh. Ooh, very no, official. Yeah. There were no programs or schedules either. So finding out when events happened involved asking somebody in a red shirt. Uh, and the question seemed to get uncertain replies, like nobody really knew what was going on. And if you ask two people, you get two different answers. Uh-oh. So figure out when and where stuff was scheduled consisted of polling most of the staff, uh, at least the ones that were busy, uh, busy playing video games. Oh, good, good. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, so most of the con was down one of the hotel's second floor hallways. Uh, on one side of the hallway, there's a lone room, which is the dealer's room and art room. And... Uh, on the other side, they had video games, and uh, yeah, th- there were two console rooms on that side. Oh, and there was a video room that was showing some 80s cartoons with VHS tapes. And so uh, I changed into costume, and I'm 
I'm literally the only person at this con in costume. And there's, other than the people working there, there's probably five people at this con. <laughs> and so I'm in costume, and I'm uh, asked when the masquerade would be, and they said, oh, it's been moved from 12.30 to 3. So I'm like, all right, I don't want to change again. So I just sat down in a video room. I was watching Transformers episodes and some G.I. Joe, <laughs> just waiting for <laughs> something to happen. Right. Uh, the dealer's room just had a couple small dealers uh, selling Transformers toys and things you could buy literally at the Natick Mall across the street. Uh, and there's a bunch of there's a guy selling a bunch of bootleg uh, VHS tapes there too for some obscene prices. So, yeah. God, yeah. I miss bootlegs sometimes. <laughs> These are bootleg VHS tapes, so I mean, it's double bad. Yeah. Okay, but I had some bootleg VHS tapes in my time. I'm kind of old. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, the, this art room had zero art in it. It consisted of some guy's <laughs> collection of random he-man transformers and mask toys and it's all just mismatched and it's not even in remarkable condition it's obviously been played <laughs> with and i have no idea why it was there never figured that out just somebody showing up hey look at i've got castle grayskull because it's art patrick <laughs> I don't, yeah why is this an art room it's more like a, art <laughs> a toy display i don't know but it wasn't even set up in dioramas like oh look he-man's fighting no it's just Here's all the toys I have. Aren't you jealous? <laughs> uh, so it was a show-off room. Yeah. Look uh, at my collection, guys. <laughs> the console gaming room had the lights on, and oh. mo there was mostly staff in there playing uh, like NES, and GameCube, and PS2. Uh, and I tried Dance Dance Revolution for the first time ever there. Wow. Uh, I was terrible. And not just because I was in full <laughs> costume. <laughs> uh and so I was playing at some Unreal Tournament, and uh, something caught my eye, and I realized there's some other people in costume. So I abandoned Unreal Tournament, got up to check it out, and it was my friends Scott and Darcy. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were the original Anime Boston mascots. Oh, okay. Some people listening to this know them, I'm sure. But uh, it was good to see familiar faces. But then, knowing only one of us could win lunch with the guests, it's like, oh, crap. We're competing against each other now. <laughs> Curses. <laughs> so uh, we hung out. I filled them in on the lack of anything at this con. Uh, and we just kind of waited around, playing games, checking out the dealer's room several times. It's like, all right, seeing all this. Right. And so uh, the afternoon's growing on. We're getting tired. We're hungry. It's like, Okay, when are you guys going to have this masquerade? And they said, oh, let's do it right now. And so we <laughs> stood it in the hallway, and the guy running the convention grabs a few other uh, staffers, and they just decide then and there that, okay, uh, you and Darcy. And so Darcy and I tied, and we could both attend the celebrity lunch the next day. So. Ooh. And so... Uh, um, I did get to see Scott and Brian in uh, the dealer's room where they're signing autographs uh, that evening, and I didn't have to pay for the fifty dollars, so I'm glad I didn't. Uh, they they were the dealers; it just had piles of Transformers toys and other stuff, DVDs that they were having them sign, like they should just write to eBay. Right. <laughs> it's obviously not personal collection. This is <laughs> They're putting it right back up online to sell. And I, they knew this too, but, you know, what are they going to do? There's nothing for their guests to do either. So Right, right. Um, so the next day we got there and uh, we were whisked away to a conference room. And uh, it was uh, Brian Drummond, Scott McNeil, Darcy and myself, and two guys who won a video game tournament or something. Okay. And uh, so we're provided with menus for the hotel restaurant while we sat around a big table in a conference room just talking. And uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I didn't want to jump in with typical fan questions. Be like, what's your favorite role in, in episode <laughs> seven of Beast Machines? What did, like, did you improv this line or was it in the script? <laughs> what's it like working with Venus Terzo? Like, no. <laughs> what's your so, dream role? <laughs> 
so we, we just kind of just had normal human conversations. Didn't wow. talk about their jobs. We talked about like uh, Brian told us how he and his wife ran an educational program back home, and Scott was telling us the wonders of Krispy Kreme. And uh, <laughs> sounds about he, right. He put his credit card on the table and said, "My wife is shopping in Boston right now. Watch it start smoking." <laughs> Um, it took an hour for these lunches to arrive, and it's, it's just craft mac like, and cheese. Pretty much, it's they're in styrofoam <laughs> containers, like just sandwiches. No, and uh, so uh, yeah, after an hour, it took them an hour to make these stupid sandwiches. And they weren't. Great. Oh my god. Uh, so after lunch, they had scheduled them for Jeopardy, uh, and so uh, there were about fifteen people in the audience. And uh, everybody in the audience is apparently a contestant, the way they're doing this. And one of the oh, categories good. is, know your Canadians. And Scott and Brian are hidden behind a curtain. And whenever somebody picked that category, one of them would do a character's voice. And the audience would have to guess who was doing that voice and what character it was. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't as easy as it sounds, because the second round had them imitating voices of famous Canadians, like bare naked ladies. <laughs> And uh, my friend Scott, not oh. coming ill, uh, he did really well in the second round and ended up with the uh, prize of a Dragon Ball Z action figure autographed by Ooh. them. Uh, and then after Jeopardy, there's a Q&A panel with pretty much typical Q&A questions. And at the end, Brian asked everybody what, was, what they're doing next. And the overwhelming response from the audience is, Anime Boston! So <laughs> flyers I left at the registration table worked. <laughs> <laughs> Huzzah! 15 people for the con. Oh, man. We, mm-hmm. might ha- we might actually have like 700 people. What? We had 4, Foreshadowing. We had 4,000. This is. Uh, but, you know, looking back, totally worth the $35. And, uh, yeah. Because yeah, I got to have lunch with Brian Drummond and Scott McNeil and got to talk to him one on one several times. Uh, but, you know, if I hadn't been at the celebrity lunch, and if they were actually hidden away, it would have been a complete waste of money. Uh, oh, the, yeah. The con itself was terrible. They that... had video games I could play at home. The, everything in the dealer's room, you could, except the bootlegs, you could get at the mall. Right. Um, but, it, and so, I mean, they had like 15 people at the con. So this never happened again. I don't mm-hmm. know if they announced dates for 2003. Uh, but the untold story of this con is how this terrible con had a direct impact on Anime Boston. Oh? Because during the prize lunch, while I waited for an hour for this box sandwich to arrive, which I only now realize might not have actually come from the hotel restaurant. It might have come from somewhere else. Maybe that's why it took so long. But anyway, <laughs> Dar- Darcy and I had talked up Anime Boston a lot, and we explained how their colleague, Kirby Morrow, was coming as a guest. And this is where we collectively cooked up the idea to have all the Gundam Wink pilots at Anime Boston 2003. Ah. Uh, Brian played Zex, and uh, Scott was Duo, I believe. He is Duo Maxwell, yes. Uh, So after getting approved by the other senior staff at Anime Boston a few weeks later, uh, Brian Drummond helped us get in contact with everyone, including Ted Cole, who had never done a con before and has yet to appear at another con. Wow. And uh, I, if I remember right, he had family in Boston, so he kind of used it as an excuse to come visit them for Easter. Well, there we go. Yeah. Uh, Perfect. I, but unfortunately, Brian, uh, Brian Drummond, wasn't ar- he wasn't able to arrange his schedule to be able to make it. And so he still has never attended Anime Boston, even though he helped us that first year. And <laughs> I, I'd love to have him someday. He hasn't done a whole lot of anime lately, but I, I feel like we still owe him. So, oh god yeah i mean he did like a bunch of stuff back in the day yeah, and he, he goes to a lot of my little pony cons these days Ooh, that's unfortunate <laughs> well i mean that's something he's voicing is it yeah what which pony is he oh i don't know I keep i'm asking this you don't know one of, one of the male ponies <laughs> you know one, one, of, one of the are dude they, ones? Are they grown-up ones called horses or are they still ponies i don't know i don't, I don't, yeah, I don't. I don't know <laughs> Maybe somebody can come on your show and explain My Little Pony conventions. Right. Because <laughs> I can't. Yeah, no. I, hey, I mean, like, hey, I don't know if I'm strong enough. <laughs> you know, if you enjoy something, go ahead. 
doesn't hey, bother me. you know, yeah. You know. Keeps you off the streets. Yeah. Um, to be fair, Patrick, that story does unfortunately end with someone passing away. Uh, oh, that's right. I mentioned Kirby, Kirby Morrow. Morrow is no he longer was, with us, he, yeah. He, he was one of the first guests we booked for Anime Boston, and he was amazing. And, you know, I, I've got... Uh, I, I think I'll save the Kirby Morrow story for next time, but... Uh, yeah. Yeah, he's... Uh, no, he's like, he was wicked nice. He's oh, such a yeah. nice guy. So, so some of my best memories about the first Anime Boston are Kirby Morrow memories. <laughs> He he was. It's all stuff behind the scenes. He was a great guest. Yeah. Yeah. And I wish we could have had him back, but you know, stuff doesn't always work out. So. Nope. That and I love seeing him in Stargate too. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. SG One or Atlantis, and he would show up flying the, one of their ships. Like, hey, I know him. <laughs> I hung out with him. I heard about his <laughs> pants. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy! And on that note, yeah, <laughs> I think we're I think we've rounded up for the week. Patrick, thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. I love I love a good horror story, and you have some of the best ones. Well, I killed uh, was it thirty people in this episode? At so, least, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not bad. Not I bad. To... Killed it. Yes, Halloween month wins. <laughs> No Michael Myers, though. Oh, it's just a slaughter. Yeah, Legionnaire's disease, man. Who knew? Yeah, yeah. watch out for that. <laughs> uh, is there anything you'd like to promote while you're here this week, sir? Oh, let's see. Um, I might as well pro- promote my own site. I know, I plugged it a couple times during the episode, so I feel guilty. But uh, fancons.com, uh, after you get vaccinated, and only after, go there to find conventions that are starting up again. Yay! And, uh, you know, I, last year at this time, I'd go through the list of conventions coming up in the next couple of weeks and it'd be canceled, move them all to canceled, postponed, canceled, postponed. Now there's, there's dozens happening every week around the world and I only have to cancel like two. So, yeah. Yeah, they're coming back. Yeah. But, you know, Slowly be safe. happening. Yeah. Be yes. safe when you go to these. But uh, Yes, yes. Follow all the rules and... And Keep even yourself, you know, some healthy. of these times don't have great rules, uh, I'm going to say. So uh, be, be safer than they want you to be. Right, right. Use use your head. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks, Patrick. Uh, yeah, and thanks, you. everybody, for tuning in. And uh, we will see you next week. Bye, guys. Bye.